Okay, we're just gonna wait for somebody to join. I don't think there's anybody there. Well, I mean, if they end up coming later. Oh, well, actually, yeah. There are people here. Interesting. Oh. This is a first. <laughs> okay, should I start? Uh, I can't. I can't see yeah, yeah, I how many people are there for some reason. Anyways, okay. So, okay, today we're going to finish up um, Matplotlib. Uh, it should be a pretty quick lesson. So, we're going to do... Uh, okay, so first we're going to import the Matplotlib like we did last time. Uh, remember, we're specifically importing the PyPlot class. So, we'll import it like that. Uh, and then we're also going to need NumPy for this. Okay, sorry. Okay. There we go. And uh, remember, if you're in Jupyter Notebooks, you want to run. Uh, you want to run this magic command. Um, the, uh, that'll allow you to see uh, the actual plot as a result uh, outside of this cell. Uh, here, you'll see this is what like if you're just normally coding. This is what it'll look like. It'll show in a separate window. So you'll see that in a second once we do it. So, okay, let's create a figure. So. Okay, so we're gonna do multi plots first. So this is where you're able to see multiple plots on the, on the um, on the graph. So you'll see. So add we're gonna add the axes uh, zero zero one one. So that's gonna take up the whole screen. Um, actually, okay, I guess I need to do that. We'll just name this one a one. Okay. Uh, then we'll add another one. Uh, so. This one, the position will, is going to be 0 0.2, 0 0.5, uh, and 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Okay, there we go. Um, so this is x, y, um, and the width and height. Maybe height and width. I don't know. We'll see in a second. Uh, well, I guess we won't because it's square. But uh, okay, x equals np dot uh, lin space uh, zero. 11 so remember this is uh, it's gonna create 11 evenly spaced numbers between 0 and 5 so okay, then y equals x cubed okay uh, so there we go we've got everything set up so we're gonna uh, go ahead and on the first axis let's go ahead and print x and y uh, and on the second axis we'll print the inverse function which is y x right Okay, so now we can do plt.show, and there we go. So you can see, like, you know, your regular, this is your x cubed function, this is your cube root function. Okay, so there we go, and you saw that it came up in a separate window. Okay, so that creates multi plots, and you could do this with as, with as many plots as you want. Um, and you you know you just add the axes like right here and then you you can just plot it. Okay, so now let's do subplots. So f and a equals plt dot subplots. Okay, so remember this is the figure. This is the axes. So okay, we're gonna again go ahead and plot x and y, and we can do a plt dot show. And you can see again it print uh, sorry plots the function like you would expect. Oops. Okay, it's gonna plot the function. Uh, okay. So now we're gonna um, do the same thing except we're gonna supply some arguments this time. So this time it'll actually be subplots. So uh, n rows equals one, n calls equals two. So of course one row and two columns so you'll see what that means in a second 
Uh, so now we're going to say for subplot in A, um, we'll say, so uh, again, this will basically iterate through all, of, so the, all of the axes, right? So uh, it'll go through all of the axes uh, and we're going to have a subplot for each of them, right? So uh, we're going to say subplot.plot uh, uh, x and y. So they're all going to be the same. Um, you wouldn't, you probably wouldn't actually do this, but at the uh, end we can, oh crap, sorry, okay. We can just say plt.show. Okay, there we go. So you can see, well, there are only two plots. There isn't really any reason to do uh, the loop, but we could have just done it manually. But um, here you can see one to the left, one to the right. And the reason that we, that happens is because the number of rows is one and number of columns is two. So we could go ahead and do the same thing again. Uh, so we could say like, I don't know, let's just say we do three by two. Uh, then we run this again. Uh, right, okay. So this time, since it's two dimensional, we have to run an additional. So here, I'll just say this is for row in A, we'll say for column in row. Uh, we'll indent this uh, and we'll replace this with column. Okay. There we go. Uh, that's, okay, there we go. So you can see two by three, um, not three by two rather. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Um, so that you can you know, carry on this, but remember to keep the dimensions in mind. And uh, this will, again, the axes are a NumPy array of the axes. So, uh, okay. Uh, and then also like, okay, so if you want, okay, so let's just say we clear these out. And then, so now what you can do is you can change the layout. So the uh, tight layout is one that you can use. Uh, this one is so um, if the plots start overlapping, then you can fix it using the different layout. So uh, in this case, we'll use a tight layout. So uh, well, same thing again, uh, and really nothing changed because we have a large enough space here, but you know, this is a fix, I guess, if your plot is not working properly. Okay. So, that's pretty much it. Um, the last thing I'll just do briefly is um, I'm gonna show you how to load a pandas data frame into this. So uh, let's see, where am I? Uh, okay, so I'm gonna cd into the uh, pandas. Okay. okay, so I'm gonna import pandas as pd. Uh, remember, normally if you're writing a file, um, write all your import statements at the top. Uh, you don't want like just in the middle of your code segment for there to be an import statement that's, it's just, it's it's uh, disorganized it, and it's annoying to read the code that way. But, um, so anyways, so we'll do pd dot, uh, sorry, we have to store it. So let's do df equals uh, pd dot read csv uh, and we're gonna do the diabetes. Um, Okay, so if we do the df, we'll see. Uh, actually, let me just zoom out a little bit so that way we can see more of that data. Okay, there we go. That's better, a bit better. Um, so, I don't know. Let's just say we wanted to get. Uh, I don't know. Let's just say we wanted to get the. Okay, so here's what I'll do I'll say uh, pd. Uh, sorry, not PD. Uh, DF dot. Uh, we'll do like. Uh, I think we'll sort it by the age. And we'll set in place to true. Oh, uh, crap, sorry. Uh, that's, sorry. Uh, 
sorry, I am messing something up right now. Uh, see, sorry, okay. Sort values, okay. Actually, what we'll do, because it's going to be useful in a second, uh, we'll go ahead and do a df dot set uh, index. We'll set it to age, uh, and then we'll uh, set in place to true. Okay, so now it uh, indexes the age, and then we'll set uh, df dot uh, sort index. Okay, uh, I forgot to say. Okay, there we go. So now if I print df, okay, there we go. So now what we can do is, sorry, okay, so plt dot plot, uh, and we're gonna plot the, uh, well, what I'll do is I'm gonna specifically take, uh, so let's just say we wanna see whether the people are diabetic and we wanna plot that against the age. So then I'll just say uh, diabetic equals df dot pop, uh, we'll just get the, specifically the diabetic column, so. Okay, so now if I look at diabetic, you'll see it's the age against whether the person is diabetic. So now I can say plt.plot uh, diabetic. Okay, there we go. And now I can say plt.show, and there we go. Um, it's a pretty useless graph um, like this because it's just going up and down. Uh, but I guess you can, if you were to look at this, you would say like, okay, there's no serious correlation between the, uh, there's no serious correlation between the age and the, uh, diabetes. Like, uh, here you can see like there's probably more people that are not diabetic and then like, you know, it's probably just a artifact of this data set being I guess more towards people who do have diabetes, but you know. Anyway, so you can do this. Um, it'd probably be more useful if you chose another feature. Let's see. Uh, I don't know. What you choose. What would be something that actually has a correlation? Um, maybe if we try. Uh, I don't know. Pregnancies. I guess younger people would maybe have fewer pregnancy. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, let me just create a new variable. So preg equals uh, plt dot. Actually, we'll just do it all in one line. So okay, plt dot plot uh, df dot pop. Uh, we'll get that pregnancies. Okay, and we'll do plt dot show. Uh, yeah, no, it's 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 still pretty weird. Um. You can also like zoom in on the data. So here, like if I were to look like, this looks kind of weird right here. So I'll just zoom in on that and you can see it like uh, that, like it go, it, so the line goes from here and then there's another data point probably right here because in the same age group, there's probably multiple people. Okay, so yeah, you can, uh, the actual window itself for, uh, let's see if I do it again. Uh, I guess not. Uh, we'll just do it. Okay. Okay. Now we'll do that. Okay. Okay. So yeah, you can look at um, this data right here. So you can edit the stuff from right here. Uh, that actually won't help. But you can go ahead and edit this. Like I can add a title right here. Um, I don't know. Let's just say, what is this? Diabetes to age. Um, and then you can change like the uh, scale and everything. So like I can set the label actually right here to age. I can set this to diabetic. Um, and then apply. And you can see that it applied those to the thing. I'm not sure if you can see it well from there, but yeah. And then. You can check like, so like if you want, instead of a linear scale for the age, uh, you can maybe do a logarithmic scale. And then you can see like, okay, two to the 10 to the first, six times 10 to the first. Here it's not that useful because, you know, it's not like you're using data that's actually 
like where log is actually relevant but uh, so we can just go back to linear but uh, that's so you can change those things right there then over here you can click the save button so you can like I guess if you maybe forgot to save write a line to save the image you can save it from this GUI interface um, you can change different things right here um, although ideally I guess you should probably just you can also move it around although uh, ideally you should probably just write this in your code so that way you don't have to manually mess with this stuff um, yeah okay so yeah that's pretty much all we have for today's lesson uh, do you know anything else that we should cover Ryan? I think you covered most of it. I mean, uh, maybe, I mean, we went over multiplots and subplots, so I guess that's right. Oh, wait, did you go over multiplots? Where it's like, uh, yeah, uh, oh, yeah. Or did you go over subplots? Because I, I had like two different sections. Yeah, I know, I saw, I saw. Okay, okay, I got yeah. you. Um, but yeah, other than that, then, yeah, I don't think there's much else. Yeah. Add, I think it's it. Alright, yeah. So, this was a shorter lesson, but we're starting linear regression tomorrow, then? Not tomorrow, and next week, next week, yeah. Next week, yeah. Next week, so yeah, next week, we're going to actually start on the actual machine learning lessons. Uh, we're going to be doing linear regression. It's not the most powerful algorithm. Um, but uh, it's a good way to start on this stuff, so we'll do that next week. Finally living up to our name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So, we will bye. Have a nice weekend. All right.